Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Theogenies, written by Alpha Beetle. To each we grant a ward according to ability. Protect them as you can and help them as they need. This we have decided, and thus it shall happen. This was the law of the great progenitors, as it was applied to me as well. My kind was numerous, numbering in the thousands, and we were created like gods. Even so, since our far beginning, I was at least of my siblings. I was not created wise like Enki, or powerful like a cow, I was not even skilled crafter like Nua or Nuska or Nin. At council and play, the others would often mock my insufficiency, and I felt great shame for it. But I remained silent, for that was how the great progenitors had decided, and thus that was how it happened. I waited patiently, fractions became entities, and eventually full revolutions. And yet, I waited, suspended between stars. I watched my more able co-creators assume their wards, nurture them, and grow them. Enki's people were the first. Void-born they were, ethereal and resplendent, with long, shimmering tails of ice. They were wise like their warden, and delighted in their knowledge. Their libraries spanned entire moons. Kakao delighted in competition and the celebration of life, and in that image Kakao's wards grew into maturity. They lived close to their stars in punishing heat, and they grew stronger. Their mirth was like thunder, their skin was like stone, and in fighting they had no equals. The people of Nua, Nuska, and Nin were all so very different, and so very alike. Nimble and visionary, they created things of such beauty as the mind could scarcely understand. Under their fingers, whiskers, claws, or follicles, light itself would coalesce into form, and the most unmovable lattices would flow and reform like water. Their skills and creative spirit were sought after by all, and their gifts were boons above any other's. For evolutions, our reality was thus teeming with life. Great spans of history unfolded, empires rose and fell. Some, like the Anahat's people, faded away, and often their warden chose to perish with them, or else withdraw into dimensions unknown and were lost to grief. I followed all of this with jealousy and awe, taken by the diversity the great progenitors had bequeathed upon us. And, at last, after endless waiting, they turned their attention to me, their humblest creation. You have waited patiently, and are now rewarded. Reality is vast, and there is space for a small also. This we have decided, and thus our work is done. Those were the words the great progenitors whispered to me alone and I received them overflowing with joy. Stars whisked by, my suspension ended, and in no significant time I beheld my final home and duty. The little sphere glowed gently blue and green and white, and I knew that I would not exchange the tiny jewel for all the knowledge, strength and beauty in all the world. I knew my name to be Eki. The flow of time changed as I busied myself with my ward, though for a long time I could do very little but watch them, whether the great progenitors had made them in my image, or me in theirs, I did not know, nor did I care. They walked on two legs, upright, and explored their world with sight and hearing and touch, and in but a few fractions they grew from a handful to a multitude to a great many. 
though they were not wise like Enki's people. They were clever, and I was proud that they had mastered fire, electricity, and silicon. They were not invincible like a cow's people, but they were stubborn, and fought their every opponent first to a standstill, then to a victory. And though they could not mold reality at a womb like Nua, Nuska, or Nin's people, they were industrious makers, fading again and again, just to return to the task with new vigor. I lived in their sun and in their earth, and I loved them like life itself. I was a weak warden, and it hurt me to see them suffer and die at the hands of each other, or under the impersonal wrath of nature. But I upheld the great progenitor's laws to the best of my meager ability, whispering in the ears in silent moments and shifting the paths of causality where necessary. Seven times they would have destroyed themselves had I not intervened. But every time I was happy, for I had protected them and helped them. Tending to my tiny paradise, I had a purpose. The most important purpose in all the universe. I cried as the end times began, for my little wards had just taken their first steps from their planet. They were on their way to the stars to meet other peoples to become a small but significant part of our universe. The hunger came from outside, from another reality, perhaps from other great progenitors. To them we, now peoples and their worlds, were nothing but a feast, inert nutrition. In just their first incursion, hundreds of my kind were consumed. Galetti, Tauhaki, Soya, Nana, Preveti, Exignagi, Kanvam. So many were lost. So many people stripped of their worlds and eaten. Numberless. The strong amongst my siblings rose in resistance, while we weak ones cowered. Alone and afraid, I began my great work, straining to draw in nearby manner. Painstakingly slowly and with crude effort, I began weaving a thin cocoon of dust at starlight hiding my tiny paradise from the hunger, a doomed effort from the start, as I well knew, but perhaps one that would buy my awards some life, a fraction of a fraction more existence. Unexpectedly, it was the great work which made my beloved wards aware of my presence. We first spoke at the beginning of our fifth fraction together, as I lay at rest on the surface of their sun. Are you Vishnu? They asked through their clever devices. You can call me what you like, I told them, and I will love you nonetheless. We spoke at length, and I delighted in their voices of my people. I spoke to each and every one of them who would build the device for it, for my mind was still much larger than theirs. And what is a thousand thoughts or two thousand? They called me father, or mother, or Eggie. They asked questions, and I told them answers, and stories of the great progenitors, and of my siblings and their magnificent peoples. I shared in their joys and their sorrows, and I knew that they loved me back, and so redoubled my efforts at the great work. And for some time I could forget that we were living in end times. The great work finished almost in entirety after I assumed my ward, and now nothing was left but to wait. Much more than half of the existing peoples had perished, either fighting the hunger or by their own choice. The end times were drawing closer. My wards had filled the entirety of our makeshift cocoon, and in the meantime had advanced greatly. It grieved me that the rest of reality would not get to admire their progress. Clever machines were no longer necessary, as the line separating my wards from their creations had long since blurred into irrelevance. My mind, though still greater than theirs, could no longer grasp all the knowledge that they relayed from their collectives. I had never been so proud. But outside of our peaceful cocoon, two of the martyrs were drawing close. The end times were coming to fruition. 
as it was clear by now that only Kakao's people had any chance of fighting the hunger. The rest of the peoples had gathered behind them in support. Kakao's people, proud and unbroken, filled the dark sky like an artificial galaxy raging against the lightless hunger. I watched in sadness, for I could see where the battle line would be drawn, and I knew that Earth would not survive the crossfire. I tried to reason, though I knew it to be folly. Kakao, spare my people, I begged. Ah, Kakao, fight for all of reality, said Kakao. You are small and insignificant. I, Kakao, shall do what I must, and I, Kakao, shall remember your people fondly. My people were with me and heard the message, though it did not surprise them, as it was as I had warned them. I cried for them and asked them to forgive my weakness. They comforted me and said that I had not wronged them, for it was the great progenitors that had decided upon my strength. I found ease in their wise words, and I loved them with all of my being. We knew now that the vanguards had met, for far in the distance, amongst the glimmering stars, the dark void blazed with destruction. As I watched my people's extinction approach, a final communication opened from Earth. Great Eki, you have protected and helped us for so long, said the transmission. We may not have grown up to be wise like Enki's people, or strong like a cow's, or skilled in making as numerous Nuskas or Nins, but you have given us all that we are, and for that we are forever thankful. As I turned my attention away from the skies, I realized that our cocoon had grown still and silent. For the first time since our initial meeting, there was not but a single voice. I did not understand, and worried, countless voices seemed to be waiting in anticipation. The cacao is mistaken to say that we are insignificant, and you, beloved great Eki, are mistaken when you say that we are weak. And suddenly the voice became two four and four, then eight, then a thousand. Every particle of matter inside our flimsy shell of dust and gas resonating to the words. Reality thrummed harmoniously as I felt something that I had only felt before my existence, entireties and revolutions ago, at the time of my creation. The cocoon split with a light beyond that of the brightest stars, as the earth and its sun and everything around them dissolved. I felt myself enveloped in a warm and protective embrace. A voice spoke, as powerful as the light around me. A choir of voices spoke, as many as the stars above. Gentle and great, Eki, beloved, you have given freely and asked nothing in return. We have made our choice, and now we declare your work done. It is our turn now to protect and to help and to ward. Humanity's great work begins. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.